All right, well, I'm Lee from Outback Fencing. And today, we're gonna to show you how to install a semi-privacy PVC fence. So stay tuned and we'll show you how it gets done. We'll cut that out, right, Zach? Yeah. All right, so what you wanna do now is determine where you're gonna put your fence, uh, which is obviously very important. Um, so to do that, we use a string line um, and I like to use uh, two pegs and uh, you put one peg at the one end and one at the other and you run that string line nice and level. Now, um, ideally you could use a laser level to get you know, point A to point B to get those lines uh, nice and perfect. Um, but usually that doesn't really matter. You can use a uh, long 1200 mil level, which will suffice. Um, as long as it looks good to the eye, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Um, so yeah, that, that's what we're gonna do this morning. All right, we've put the stringer line up now. Um, we've gone from one end to the other here, and we've leveled that off with a 1200 mil level, which is gonna be all right for a small distance that we're doing today. Obviously, if you're doing 100 meters, you really wanna get a laser level or something like that. But we're only doing 12, 14 meters, um, your, your small 1200 mil level is gonna be sufficient. Um, <clears throat> so with this string line, that's actually gonna be the bottom of our semi-privacy fence and that's gonna be the bottom of the rail. That's what we've set that up as. Um, so when, when we go to mark some posts, um, we're gonna measure down from the top and we're gonna to measure to that bottom rail. Um, so then we know how far the posts need to go into the ground and that way we can get them all nice and uh, straight uh, in, and in line. All right. So what we're going to do now is uh, to work out our spacings of where to dig the holes. So what I've made up here um, are some spacings. So we've worked out where we want to put our first post and we've dropped this spacer into the centre of the post, even though the post isn't there, but we're imagining where the post will be, so the centre of the post. So basically you want to work your spacings at 2450 centres, so 2450 millimetres. So 2450 centres, so it means from the centre of your post to the centre of your post. So at the moment we're only digging the holes. Um, so I've marked with a bit of paint there, gone to 2450. I'm going to mark a little bit of paint there. Then I get my second spacer. And I basically buff that up against, nice and tight against the first one. And I pick that up. And put that down in the next spot paint where I've got to go and put that one up against that and go you just keep doing that for the entire length of your fence and that's how you work out where your holes are going to go um, then all you're going to need to do now is dig the holes all right so what we're doing now is we're digging the holes and uh, what we've got here is some double-handed shovels and uh, <laughs> You've hit a tree root. Oh, Jack's hit a tree root. These things do happen, um, but he'll get through it. It's just another day in the fencing world. But yeah, we'll get through a tree root. As long as it's not uh, power to the whole neighborhood, I think we'll be all right. So yeah, we're just digging a hole here. So roughly you want to be able to dig your holes probably around about uh, 250 to 300 mil wide by about 700 mil deep. And that'll give you a, a nice, decent... Um, uh, footing to deal with All right, so what I like to do we've dug all the holes we've got our string line exactly where it needs to be um, So I've made the string line to The bottom of the rail so as you can see here this is the bottom of the rail all Right, so what I want to do now to make sure that all my posts go in perfectly into the holes to that string line I've measured from the top to the bottom of the rail for this semi-privacy fence 1250 so we measure basically on the side of your post where your string line is going to be down 1250 I've got a permanent marker I've just put a tiny little dot um, on that because obviously it's permanent marker but you're probably better off actually using something like a pencil that's easy to wipe off at the end of the day if you don't mind cleaning off a little permanent marker dot with a bit of um, a bit of a uh, bit of a wipe um, that's fine, but yeah, I'd probably suggest use a pencil. So I've gone along and I've marked all those, ready 
uh, to, to concrete these in. All right, so what we're gonna do, we've, we've concreted a couple of posts in, so we're gonna show you how it's done. So I'm gonna get the spacer here, and I'm gonna put the spacer center of this post. Now, if you don't know the center, I'm guessing it, I'm taking the risk of guessing it, but if you don't wanna uh, take the risk, work out the center of this post so you get it absolutely perfect and put your spacer to that level. And then our spacer then is gonna be there next to the hole. I'm gonna grab our post with a tiny little mark on it. And we're gonna test this hole before we put any concrete in it. Now, the hole's been dug out correctly, so we're good there. Now, I wanna level this post. And when I'm leveling, I wanna keep an eye to make sure that when it is level, that it's center of that, of that spacer. So if you need to, do some small adjustments. And also wanna level it that way towards the string line as well. And if you need to, make some small adjustments. holes pretty much um, in a good spot there now it's probably good um, that you have uh, two people to do this job it's the first time you're doing it because um, it can be a little bit tricky doing it this way so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to concrete a post with leaving it in here and pouring the concrete around it which makes it heaps easier spacer now, put your foot behind the post and have it little sort of leaning up against it like that. Get your bag and pull it around the post. And just sort of push that post over then like that and get some concrete in behind it. Now get your spacer All that sensor of the post. Make sure it's sensor of the post here. Make sure that's level. Make sure that's level. Now, one of the most important things, making sure that that mark is on that string line because by getting that mark on the string line with all the other posts, you're gonna get that nice top um, perfectly, nice in line and straight. Um, so we've made all those adjustments. We just do one last, one last leveling of the posts before we walk away. So the checks that you wanna do Make sure you're centered the center of your spacing, make sure you're on the mark, and make sure your post is level. Once all of those things are in place and you've got that all sorted, you're ready to leave that post and move on to the next one. All right, so again, what we're gonna do now is get our space the center of this post, just like we did on the last one. And what I'm gonna show you now is sort of the one man way of doing this. So we've got the space the right, first of all, we just wanna make sure that our post at least goes all the way down past our little line, and it does. You might wanna get a level on that and just check that the hole doesn't need to be dug out on the sides or down deeper. It doesn't at this stage, so we've got a good hole. So what I'm gonna do now is just gonna pour a little bit of concrete in and we're gonna sort of drop this down into the hole, um, which is what I sort of like to do. With the rapid set bags, it's a bit harder to push the um, post down into the concrete. If you're using like a wet mix or a, um, uh, you know, like a concrete mix from a concrete truck, you're gonna have a lot more time to play with these posts uh, compared to the rapid set bags, and they're gonna be a lot smoother and easier to push down into the hole. So we'll put our water in first. And 
going to pour that back in. I'll put about two thirds of the bag in there. So our space is right. Then we want to get to the center of this post. And all I like to do is just sort of hold it with your thumb and finger. Get a bit of a, let the weight of the post level itself. And just sort of slowly. Drop that in. And then what you do is give that a bit of a level. That way, we're good. And this way, we're also good. Now we're a little bit high, we just want to drop that down. Give it a little bit of a wiggle, drop it down, a little bit of a wiggle, drop it down. Um, ideally, you just want to put enough concrete in so you can get that nice and right. Um, so what we're going to do now, that mark is now down to the string line. We're just going to level that, make sure it's centre of the rail. And level that, make sure it's pretty good with, the, with that there. And then you go along, fill some more water in, fill more concrete around that hole to really sturdy it up. And uh, that's the two ways that you can concrete a post in. Well, look at that. Fully posted the job. We're just going to have a little break for half an hour, do some tidying up, let these posts set nice and good, and then we're going to whack in the semi-privacy PVC fence panels. All right, so we've just opened up our box of uh, a semi-privacy fence panel, and this is what it will look like, and we're about to pop in a, uh, a panel right now. All right, so first things first, We've obviously let these uh, posts set. They're all nice and hard, we hope. And uh, if you leave it a lot, uh, long enough time, even if you leave it a day, you're probably a lot better off. But we've only left it probably, what, half an hour really from this end. So you want to establish your bottom rail, which is your biggest one. And you know that you've got your bottom rail because you're going to have a piece of aluminium uh, in the bottom inside. Now, before you pop it in, you will find for packing purposes, they've tried to squeeze everything in. So you want to get all those little, make sure there's no pickets in there. All right, so there's your aluminium insert. Now I've had plenty of customers come up to me and go, Lee, we've, we've run out of pickets, there's no pickets in the box. Well, I've got a good feeling they've probably got a few pickets inside the bottom rail um, and they haven't checked that. So basically, um, we've got these little notches here on, end, on each end. And you just want to slot that one in. All right, and push that all the way through. And then come to your next one. I like to get behind it like this. And bring your next one in. And just give that a little push. And basically just give it enough of a push so it clips in. You can hear it clip in. And just give it a bit of a wriggle back and forth. And in that way you know, uh, you know that you've installed the bottom uh, correctly. Now, you want to establish your pickets. Now you're going to have two longer pickets. So you want to make sure that you put those in in the right spot. Here is your middle rail, which we're just going to put right there for now. Now, actually, if you want to work out where um, your tallest spigots are going to go, you can get your middle rail and flip it over like that and sort of line it up with your bottom rail. You go, all right, well, that's that one there is where the longer picket that's got to go and this one here is where the longer picket's got to go as well. <coughs> now you want to leave them till last. So what we're going to do now is get our smaller pickets and plop them in. Now I'm going to put the smaller ones first on either side where I know the longer picket needs to go. 
That way I'm not going to make any mistakes. And all you need to do is just sort of put them in place and just give it a little tap with your hand. Alright, now what we want to do is put our um, middle rail in. Now this is probably the trickiest part of the job really. Now what I like to do is just sort of place it on like there. Get that first one on and click it in. Don't pop it inside the post yet. And then just sort of slowly slowly work these on. Um, so with one hand behind here, sort of holding the rail up on a bit of an angle and then sort of sliding these in. Now, if you're finding when you're tapping these in that it's not going down, you want to make sure that the, these little, um, those little, you're not seeing any of those little clips. Now, if you're sort of tapping it in and it doesn't seem like it's doing anything, what you need to do is put a bit of pressure on the top rail, grab your rail here like this, and give it a little pull up, and actually makes it heaps easier. That Right, you want to make sure that they're all clicked in and then you've got like a little bit of a play here as you can see so what you want to do is get get behind put some pressure behind this post and just sort of slide that in all the way through and then obviously then at this end tap that down line it up That's how that, that gets done. All right, now you got your two long boys. I don't know why they're boys, but... <laughs> they could be girls as well. Pop them in. Give them a little tap. Put your top rail in. There is a bit of uh, force that's being put onto these posts, so it probably is good to leave these for a day if you can. That way you have a nice straight fence. Um, we're a little bit strapped for time for the purpose of this video. So um, if you do leave it only half an hour to an hour, once you've put a few panels in, just recheck these posts with your long level. Make sure the level and it just gives that a bit of a pack around the post to compact that concrete back again. Um, but that is pretty much how you put a panel in. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we've got a few more panels to go. We're gonna go along now and whack them in and uh, we'll see you at the end of the job. Now, for those of you that are having uh, difficulty putting in this top rail, it is probably the hard bit of the job once you get all of this in. So what you wanna do first, pop that in and push that all the way through. That's the easy bit. Then what you want to do is bring this top rail until it's touching your post here. And then, obviously the centre of your hole is going to be off because it's not in, right? But what you want to do then is just push that back and just give it a little tap with your hand. And that's in the hole now, alright? It's obviously bent a little bit. Then you want to get this one, get it lined up. And then you just tap that down. Tap that in. 
that's it. All right, well, we'll put in all the full panels that we can. And obviously, if we get to the end of the job here, we've got a small panel that we need to work out. Now, that's not a problem. We can do this. So basically, measure up. You want to make sure that the, your, all your rails, bottom, middle, and top, go in at each end at least 20 mil. So um, you can go a little bit longer if need be. In this case, I'm going to go a little bit longer. I'm going to go 40 mil in and 40 mil on this end. Now, to make it look nice, you probably for this stand that we've got here you probably want to include a picket um, into this now if you just go along and just measure it your measurement might come up to here and your picket's going to be not center of your panel so it might look a little bit funny um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to work out the difference and I'm going to cut from this end obviously I'm not cutting this panel I'm cutting that panel but I'm going to cut from this end and try and get that um, get that picket in the middle of the fence, if that makes sense. So, yeah, you need to do a little bit of uh, bit of maths um, to work that out. Take your time, and then what we use is a bachelor angle grinder with a very thin metal blade disc to cut the uh, PVC bottom, middle, and top rails. Um, just go along and, and cut them through. Now you're going to be cutting one end or sometimes both ends to get that picket in the middle. If that's the case, um, you want to make sure that the, the rails that you do put in are longer than 20 mil inside the post here, um, just so it doesn't slide out and pop out. Now you'll get your bottom rail in, that's fine. Um, we do also have a tool on our website which makes up these, um, which make these little clips as you can see here. All right, so if you do cut a panel, we do have a tool on our website. You put the tool in there and you can make your own little crimped um, little clip. Now, if you don't want to do that, you do run the risk of the bottom rail sliding and popping out. Um, but you can take that risk. With the top one, you can make sure that doesn't slide out for putting the screw in here into the top rail um, inside the post before you put the post cap on so that doesn't slide out. But that's pretty much how we do it. All right, so instead of getting the picket, um, this is an alternative, um, and it's probably actually better. Instead of getting the picket center of this panel, you want to be able to probably match it with the distance between this picket and this picket, if that makes sense. So what I mean by that is, don't cut one end when you pop it in. So you've got about 1,200 between the pickets. Probably want your picket being about here, which ends up being pretty much the center anyway. But that way it lines up with the rest of your panel, the spacings of your pickets, which is actually gonna probably look better to the eye, in my opinion. So um, that way you don't need to center this. You only need to cut one end um, and you'll have a clip in one end. Um, so yeah, we'll show you the end product. All right, well, we'll put all the panels in. And as you can see, this is our cut panel here. So the distance between here and here matches the rest of the distance between the pickets for the length of the fence, even though it's not perfectly center. The last thing you wanna do, whack the post caps on. Now, you can go along, uh, if, you don't, if you wanna make sure that these don't pop off, you can go along and put some builder's glue or some silicon on those to make sure they don't come off. But that's pretty much it. And now we're just gonna do a bit of a tidy up. Well, there you have it. That's how you install semi-privacy PVC fence without back fencing. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, give us a call.